three things I would never do in an MSP. And it doesn't matter if you're just starting out or you already have a team of 10 or 15 or 20 even people, this video is applicable to you and you probably might be making one of these mistakes. I'm also gonna give you some solutions to these problems. My name is Harrison Barron from growth-generators.com. We help MSPs with sales training and marketing. Before I get into today's video, I do have to mention a couple quick things. Number one, there is always a masterclass down below. Recording was supposed to happen, but it has been monsooning in Charlotte, North Carolina. So it is coming, I promise you that, for the newest masterclass, but the current one is still fantastic. Number two, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I need a giant board here that says join the free discord. The value that people are getting, the conversations that are happening are honestly amazing to see. So with that being said, take time, go do that. Go jump in the discord. It's, it's literally free. There's no, I don't even ask for an email in there. So let's talk about three things I would never do in an MSP. Now, if you are established, fantastic. If you're just starting out, avoid these mistakes and you will just be set on a clear path to success. So let's talk about number one, don't neglect client communication. Now I know that we have RMM and PSA tools. There's a great way to exchange tickets, kind of converse, and there's even some platforms that have the ability to chat or throw a chat on your target client screen and say, hey, this is what's going on with your computer. Let's work on it. I shouldn't say target client, an existing client. The problem is, is we probably as owners or managers of them are thinking, well, I can't have a conversation. Or if you get to the point where you're like, I really don't want to have this conversation. Like I really, I don't feel good. You're probably doing something wrong. And you know that something has gone wrong. And most of the time, this can easily be resolved with this little device, picking it up and calling the person. It is not, it is nearly never as bad as you actually think. Now, depending on how much neglect you've already done, there might be some, it might be too far gone thing. But in the last video I mentioned, meet with your clients on a quarterly or semi-annual basis, maybe twice a year or annually and cover everything that's been going on. Tickets, what's going on in their business? What are they struggling with? Where you might be able to provide value. The more you can give, the better off you're going to be. But I can't even begin to tell you how many clients, just regular businesses out there that have hired MSPs. And when I talk to them, because I am a human, I go out and meet people and talk to people. They're like, oh, I haven't talked to my, my IT company in months. I just put in tickets. Yeah, they're okay. But like, I don't even know if they know what's going on in my business anymore. It's crazy. So if you're just starting, there is literally no competition out there. And if you are an established MSP, make the phone call. I promise you it's not as bad as you think it is. Take a day off, right, from all of the busy work. Try to have your employees, if you have them, do all of the busy work and take the day, bring out a couple boxes of donuts, grab some coffee, pay for lunch, buy lunch, buy breakfast, buy dinner, bring it into the company and spend an hour or two there you are going to get the learning lesson of a lifetime of what you're doing good, what you're doing bad, and where there's opportunity to improve. So number one, don't neglect client communication, especially in the beginning during the onboarding. You should be, they should be your best friend all of the time, constant, constant phone calls. Number two, training. I know that this is crazy and I'm, most people are like, well, I'm training all the time. There's two types of training. There's internal, your staff, and external, their staff. Build some kind of training. It doesn't need to be crazy. But us as MSPs are singularly focused on being proactive. That is the most important thing we do, and Help Desk is just below it. Because if we can be proactive, they don't put in tickets, which means less time our, our clients, or better yet, our employees, are tied up and increased profitability, which is the best thing in the world. Don't miss out on building training. Build some kind of internal training. There should be training for the green people that are just getting their first job or just getting into the industry. And, you know, hey, this is how you fix this. This is how you do this. They can watch videos of other employees doing the work. And there should be an external training. Hey, this is why you don't bring personal devices. This is why you change your passwords on a regular basis. This is why you might want to use a password manager. Hey, by the way, if the printer's not working, you shouldn't be playing with it. 
give us a call first because if you're playing with it, you might misconfigure something that takes us even more time to actually go and resolve. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but creating these basic levels of training as a huge value add to your existing customers is fantastic. Hey, how to avoid a phishing email. It's the easiest thing in the world. And if you don't know how to build any of these things, there's websites or companies like know before that will literally teach like anti phishing practices. Yeah, you got to spend a little bit of money on it, but they'll do all the hard work for you. And you can even charge your clients a little more money for that training. It is worth its weight in gold. And most MSPs, the lion's share, the majority of them are not take, not even offering educational resources to their clients because it could save you, the business owner of the MSP, tons and tons and tons of headaches and increased profitability with avoiding massive, massive disasters. So we have number one, don't neglect your client communication. Number two, don't ignore staff training internally and externally. And number three, no matter where you are, you should have a buyer persona. I will die on this throne. Every business I've talked to, every marketing expert I've talked to, they say, if you're asking people for a buyer persona, that is the greatest thing anyone has ever done because nobody in the industry is telling them to go get a buyer persona. There is a buyer persona down below this video. It takes no more than five or 10 minutes to fill this whole thing out. There's, there's two pages. I'm going to show you page one, but who they are, what they like, what they don't like, how much money they're making, where they're located, the level of education, the psychographics, hobbies, activities, what values and what matters most to them and their behaviors. There's a whole second page to this. This will make your life a million times easier because when you can picture who your ideal client is and even better yet, hand this piece of paper over to your employees and say, this is our ideal client. Every single person you talk to, for the most part, is this kind of person. That employee now is prepared and can start preparing mentally for the types of people that they are going to be working with. Additionally, if you decide to hire people, hey, this is our target client. This is who you're going to be dealing with. So there's no surprises when you come in the door. Yeah, you're going to be dealing with a bunch of different environments, which is what you want to do and play with a bunch of cool tech. But at the end of the day, we have to do preventative maintenance and we have to make sure that we have an incredible level of service. That's the most important thing. And this is who we are servicing by having that creating marketing material for these people teaching your employees this is the kind of person that we're dealing with and how to deal with that person, you are setting yourself up for an infinitely more successful business. And it doesn't matter if you have 10 or 15 or 20 employees. If I ask you, who is your perfect client? And you're like, uh, I don't know. I promise you, you will make so much more money filling out this sheet. I'm holding up a blank piece of paper, but going through this step by step, the clarity that you guys get is just incredible. I see it in the Discord. I see it in the Launchpad. I see it in discovery calls. I see it in coaching calls. It is the single greatest thing I have ever made, bar none. I'm coming up with the best tools that I could possibly think of. And every single person that fills this out is like, it all makes sense now. Everything I need to do is geared towards this person on the buyer's persona, and then they are super excited to buy. You know about them. Your employees know about them, and everything works like a well-oiled machine. So I hope this video helps. Three things I would never do in an MSP. Once again, recap. Neglect customer relations. Two, ignore staff training. Three, not have a buyer persona. And four, as a bonus, I would never not like and subscribe these to these videos and channels because you're going to learn a ton of information. That's just a bonus for you. So take a moment. I'll, I'll wait for you, actually. You know, we'll just pause the video here. Just thank you. I appreciate it. The like button is all I need. If Look, you want to hit the subscribe button? I appreciate that, too. But that is the most important things for your MSP. I hope this video helps. I hope you guys are crushing it. I hope you guys go into a fantastic weekend. I have videos planned all weekend long. I'll see you guys later. I love you guys. Join the Discord.